If you wrote a love letter, what would you write to? Dear double stuffed pepperoni pizza with extra cheese, you're like a warm hug on a cold day. Dear PS260, your lightning speed and 20 teraflops of power make my heart beat faster. Dear furry fluffy pillow, you're so dreamy, I never want to get up when the alarm rings for school. Dear Atomic Cruiser Skateboard, you make my stomach flutter every time we do a kick turn. It's true, all these things can make you feel pretty great, but real love isn't actually about how you feel. In fact, true love is an action. One of the greatest love letters of all time shares what love does. Love is patient, love is kind, it is not proud. It doesn't dishonor other people. It does not look out for its own interests. It does not easily become angry. It doesn't keep track of other people's wrongs. It always protects, it always trusts, it always hopes, it never gives up. Love never fails. And the best part, you don't have to come up with this kind of love on your own. Ask God and God will pour out love to share with everyone you meet. Then others can see God at work in you. That's why love is an amazing way to worship God with your life. Because worship is about more than just singing loud. It's all about living loud. Jacob, just catching up on a little reading. I love to read. Sometimes it's just really nice to turn off all the screens and open up a good book. There are all kinds of books out there for all kinds of people, like <gasps> Westerns. This town ain't big enough for the both of us, partner. <laughs> or 
fantasies. You shall not pass. Ah! Also, cookbooks. Uh. You're gonna set the mixer to puree for 14 minutes. And even audiobooks. The longest fingernails are nearly 30 feet long. That's three feet per finger. Hmm. Oh, here's a book I remember. Kimberly Toast's Book of Manners. It's about being polite and following the rules. It tells you things like which fork is a salad fork or oh, how you're not supposed to have your elbows on the dining room table. You know, saying things like please and thank you. There's so many rules. It's like there's a rule for everything. So many books are about so many different things. And there are millions of books on what we're gonna talk about today. Love. Love is showing others how much they matter to you. Today's story is about love and it's about rules. Really, it's about the most important rule ever and how the people who saw only a book of rules we're missing out on a way more epic love story. Huh, did you know it's impolite to burp in front of strangers? <laughs> I've been doing it all wrong. I'll see you soon. Huh. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Matthew, chapter 22, verses 34 through 40. Unlike the nations around them, the Israelites worshipped only one God. Hear, O Israel! The Lord our God, the Lord is one. When God led the Israelites out of slavery in Egypt, God called Moses up to the top of Mount Sinai. You have seen how I carried you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now if you obey me fully and keep my covenant, you will be my treasured possession and a holy nation. Out of a deep love, God gave Moses a set of 10 rules so that the people would know how to live in their newfound freedom. Here is what God says. Don't put any other gods in place of me. Don't make statues of other gods to worship. Don't misuse the name of the Lord your God. Rest on the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Honor your father and mother. Do not murder. Keep your promises to your husband or wife. Do not steal. Do not lie. Do not be jealous or envious of what others have. There were 10 commandments and many additional laws too. But it's not stealing if I just happen to borrow my neighbor's best donkey grooming brush, right? Some people look for ways around all those rules. Other people were so scared of breaking the rules they'd spent their whole lives trying to get it exactly right. <laughs> uh, what if I walk too far on the Sabbath and, and, and get out of breath? That's, that's not resting. We, we better say you can't go outside the city at, at all on the Sabbath. There were 613 laws in total and even more that the religious leaders added. They spent hundreds of years trying to get those laws exactly right and to make sure others did too. It was really the only way they knew that they would be sure that God was pleased with them. You can't sacrifice this goat in the temple. It has a freckle three-eighths of an inch behind its right front leg. Even under Roman rule, the Jewish leaders made sure to keep every single law perfectly, but they were more worried about getting things right than about what was in their hearts. Then, Jesus showed up, traveling and teaching, but he didn't act like any other teacher or rabbi. He gathered followers from the outcasts, fishermen, and tax collectors. Come, follow me. Jesus spent time with the people everyone else avoided. He made blind people see, and those who couldn't walk get up and dance. He healed those with terrible skin diseases. Look, look, 
My skin is clean! I can go home to my family! Jesus invited women to follow him, something no other rabbi would do. He welcomed little children and blessed them, even though most people saw kids as a nuisance. The kingdom of heaven belongs to people like them. Jesus told a story in which a Samaritan, a person who was viewed as the enemy by Jews, was the hero. And when Jesus was giving out a list of people blessed by God, it certainly didn't include perfect rule followers. Blessed are those who are humble. They will be given the earth. Yep, Jesus was turning things upside down and the religious leaders did not like it one bit, so they started looking for ways to trap him. One day they saw Jesus approaching a man with a twisted hand. Jesus, does the law allow us to heal on the Sabbath day? They wanted to catch Jesus breaking the law by healing the man, but instead Jesus said, What if one of your sheep falls into a pit on the Sabbath day? Won't you lift it out? A person is worth more than sheep. So the law allows us to do good on the Sabbath day. Then Jesus healed the man's hand. Preposterous. During Passover week, the whole city was stirred up to see what Jesus would do, and the religious leaders were desperate to silence him. Several of the leaders, called Pharisees, came to Jesus. One of them was an expert in all 613 laws, and he was sure he could turn the crowd against Jesus. <coughs> Teacher! The law expert waited until there was a silence so that everyone would hear. Which is the most important commandment in the law? <laughs> the law expert told himself gleefully, Jesus will have to pick just one law, and then I can point out all the other laws he's ignoring, and everyone will get upset. But Jesus said simply, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Love him with all your mind. This is the first and most important commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Before the law expert could tear this answer apart, Jesus continued, Everything that is written in the Law and the Prophets is based on these two commandments. But, oh. In a few short sentences, Jesus had taken 613 laws and wrapped them up in just two things to remember. Love God, love others. Instead of rules, it's about hearts. If you love God, you won't put other things ahead of God. If you love others, you won't steal or break promises to them. Instead of memorizing long lists of rules, God simply wants followers of Jesus to ask, what does it look like today for me to love God and love others? It wasn't easy back then and it isn't easy for us now, but God will pour out love in our hearts anytime we ask. There are a lot of rules in life. And some people see this, the Bible, as a book of rules. And it's true, the Bible does include God's rules for our lives, but it's way more than that. It's a collection of stories. But a Samaritan came to the place where the man was. When he saw the man, he felt sorry for him. Letters? I, Paul, am writing this letter. Silas and Timothy joined me in writing. We are sending this letter to you. The members of the church in Thessalonic, Thessalonica, <clears throat> anyway, the church in that place, poems and songs. The Lord is my shepherd. And a whole lot of history. The Bible was written by a bunch of different writers over hundreds of years. And yet somehow, miraculously, it tells the same epic love story. It's about God's amazing love for people throughout history, ending with God's amazing love for you and me. And Jesus boils all of God's rules for our lives down to this. Love the Lord your God and love your neighbor. Love God and love others. And I think you could even say it like this. Love God by loving others. Show you love God by loving the people God has created. So when you're kind to someone in need, you're loving God. When you cheer someone up who's sad, you're loving God. When you take care of someone who's sick, you're loving God. And when you forgive someone, you're loving God. So, here's the one thing to remember today. Love God by loving others. That's a good rule to follow. Way better than not belching in front of strangers. <laughs> what? We're not.
not strangers. Also, excuse me. <laughs> I'll see you next time. Thank you.